actually a few weeks ago or some time ago, the British media had covered some of your research and they had labeled it that iron supplements have the potential to cause bowel cancer. Mm -hmm. Could you elaborate a little bit on that? Is it true? Is it, I I mean, Mm -hmm. what's the research behind it? Yeah, so that was some research I was involved with through a collaboration with uh, researchers from Sweden. And uh, and we were really um, just looking at sort of the mechanisms behind some of the cellular effects of iron. So quite a few years ago, more than a decade ago, there has been some animal studies that have shown actually a link between iron ingested through foods and colon cancer. So there was already that link there. So this research led by the the Swedish researcher, they were really just looking at how iron in those cells really either switches on or off certain molecules in the cells that are involved in cell growth. So these molecules that were stimulated by iron, um, the same iron compounds that are used in some supplements, they seem to be involved in this cell growth. Mm -hmm. But it was really picked up by the media as something really um, very related with colon cancer. And these really are just cellular effects, just cells exposed to iron. And it's a very artificial system when we actually grow these cells in a Petri dish in the lab. It's not the same as when we have them inside a person. If it was, it would be very good for cancer therapy, for example, because Mm -hmm. we have a lot of cancer therapies that do work in these cell-based experiments, but when we actually try them in humans, they don't. So So, yeah, there's a big jump there to go from the petri dish in cells to the human Mm -hmm. situation. So I'm not saying that there could not be some effect there of very high dose iron supplements and for specific groups that are at increased risk of colon cancer. It's something that would make sense because um, as I said, iron is needed for anything that utilizes oxygen and that is growing. Right, and tumor and cells, cells grow very fast, so they need to, a lot of oxygen. Yeah, Bacteria, the same. So then the biological reason is there for why iron could potentiate some tumor growth. Yeah, But that doesn't really mean that in a... That a, iron is the cause. Is the cause of it, yeah. it. Yes, in terms of colon cancer. But in terms of current iron supplements that are on the market, mm-hmm. like low dosages... Yeah, so that I wouldn't think there is really any evidence they are to support the claims that iron supplements potentiate colon cancer, really. So actually, how would you rewrite those headlines? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would, uh, I mean, they probably would not be headlines in the way that I would write them because <laughs> iron deficiency and iron deficiency anemia are the main nutritional deficiency disorders in the world. Mm-hmm. They affect 2 billion people, so we should really be worried about getting people to have enough iron in their diets rather than confusing the message with saying that that iron is making people have colon cancer, which is really not the case, and there's no evidence for that. Right, especially because iron, it's just the effect of it. It's not the actual cause. Exactly. As exactly. of the research that yes. was claimed in the media. Yes, exactly. Well, actually, talking about your research, I'd like to discuss a little bit more with you about... Mm-hmm what you've been doing in Gambia. I mean, it's you've been telling me a lot about it and it really sounds incredible. <laughs> so if you could, I would like you just to maybe describe your research sure. and what it actually is now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I started working on iron, um, started working on that around 2005. And, and the more I learned about iron, the more incredible it, it was that actually I was surprised that we hadn't solved the issue of iron deficiency. It's not Mm. something that needs a very high technology solution or it's not rocket science, as Mm. we say, because we know people don't have enough iron in their body. We know what foods contain iron or how to give supplements to people. We should Mm. be able to solve this deficiency, but we haven't. And that was really intriguing to me. And I really wanted to do something to help at that area. Uh, and especially in terms of the resource poor rural areas where there is really a serious problem. I mean, in rural areas, especially in Sub Saharan Africa and Southeast Asia, we have a, a massive problem of anemia and iron deficiency anemia because uh, the diet there is very poor in um, iron that we can absorb. Um, and also, people are at more risk of having other causes of anemia, such as malaria and intestinal parasites that really cause bleeding um, and malaria causes bursting of red blood cells. So people need a a lot more iron in that situation, especially these women that are iron deficient. They are also anemic, severely anemic. They are maybe walking around with hemoglobins of 
six, seven, the lower the hemoglobin is, then the higher the risk for maternal hemorrhage, either before delivery or during delivery. Mm. And that is the main cause of maternal death, is really to, to bleed out during pregnancy and delivery. Because if you imagine, I mean, if that was happening in a high-income country, you could go easily to A&E quickly and be able to solve um, the bleeding, but if you're living in rural Africa and you start bleeding during mm. pregnancy or when you deliver at home, um, then it's really hard to manage that situation. And that's mm. why there's the main cause of maternal death. So then iron deficiency can actually cause uh, death yeah. during pregnancy. Yes, exactly. Huh. Could you elaborate on yeah, that Yeah, so bit? it can cause both death in the mother and also in the unborn child. So. Wow. If the mother was iron deficient anemic during pregnancy, the child is at higher risk of being born prematurely mm. and being born with low birth weight. And those children then are at higher risk of dying in the first year of life because they didn't have that neonatal care that premature babies have mm. here in high income countries. Right. Um, and if they have low iron levels, then that impacts their immunity and their higher risk of getting infections either in the period just post delivery or in that first year during lactation uh, where the immune system is really mm. needs iron to keep going. And right. uh, so it's a massive problem. It's the main cause of disease burden in rural sub-Saharan Africa is iron deficiency anemia. This podcast was produced by the European Food Information Council as part of the Speaking Up for Science Action Network project. <laughs>